All right, today we're going to take a look at some of the solenoids that we find on Bobcat equipment, specifically some of these three-wire solenoids, like this fuel shutoff solenoid. And we've also got a three-wire solenoid on the brake circuit as well. So if your engine won't start and you have a problem, you know, with the, the fuel shutoff solenoid or your brakes won't release, we're going to just take a look at how this, these solenoids work, what controls them, and how to test them and diagnose the circuits. It's hard to cover every uh, symptom that you'll probably run into, but the more you know how this works, the easier it will be to troubleshoot. So I've got several different styles of solenoids that we can take a look at here. But the very first thing we need to know before we start diagnosing these is that every one of them has something in common. Number one, every one of these, no exceptions, is going to be a fuse. These are just a couple different fuses. We got a 30 amp and a 25 amp. Um, I've seen both 25 and 30 amp fuses and just different machines, you know, it's just something to know. And that fuse is what's going to feed a relay. So every one of these, like I said, no exceptions is going to have a relay, whether it's a push-in style, like on the G-Series or one of these uh, rail mount uh, relays that the wire and harness plugs into, like on the um, F-Series. So first thing to check, of course, is the fuse and relay. But now what does a fuse and relay control? Okay, let's take a look at one of these solenoids. And like we said, it's a three wire solenoid. So there's two circuits inside, essentially two coils. We've got a pull and a hold circuit, okay? So in order to pull this mechanism in, you know, it's got a spring, it springs out. It, it takes quite a bit of power, I guess, to push that or to pull it in. So this white wire is going to be very low resistance, and we'll take a look at that in a second. Now the other coil is going to have a much higher resistance on it, because once that white wire pulls that in, it only takes a little bit of power to actually hold it there. And we'll, we'll kind of take a look at that as well. So being that this is low resistance, that's why we have to have a fuse and a relay to pull this in. So real quick, let's just take our meter on a known good solenoid and let's just take a look at a couple of these circuits. So I'm going to put the black, of course, to black wire because black is going to be our ground. Now let's put it on what we call the pull circuit or the white wire and let's see what that resistance is going to be. Let me get my meter set. So 0.4 ohms of resistance. Now, keep that in mind, 0.4. Now let's go to the hold circuit. 23.9 or roughly 24 ohms of resistance. So 0.4 is low resistance, high current. So if we just do a simple calculation, Ohm's law, we know that this is a 12 volt circuit, right? So yeah, the battery can be 12.4 fully charged, but let's just say for sake of conversation, 12 volts, 0.4 ohms of resistance is what, uh, for, that's 30 amps of current. So that's why we have to have a fuse and of course a relay in order to energize in that, that pull circuit. Now what did we say that this is roughly 24 ohms of resistance on the red wire or the hold circuit. So Ohm's law tells us 12, 24, that's basically half an amp of current. So anything can hold it at half an amp of current. So we won't hardly ever have a fuse on the hold circuit. What controls both? We're, we're kind of jumping ahead here, but let, let's take a look at a couple things that control the pull and the hold. All right, we're going to go over and look at an F-series uh, machine. The ignition switch controls the pull. So when you turn the key on, it sends power to the pull um, and the hold. However, it is controlled through a timer relay like this. So ignition power energizes this, and we'll take a look at it here in a second. Here's where our fuse is, is in this timer relay. And like I said, it's, it's going to pull and hold, but it's, it's a timer because we can't run 30 amps of current 
for a long period of time through this white wire. So we only energize this white wire no matter what controls us, whether this or one of our controllers here that we're about to take a look at. It's only a momentary um, source of power just to pull. And then the hold takes over because that's like half an amp. Our uh, G series, this is what it looks like here. Uh, this controller will actually sends a signal for the pull. So when you turn to the crank position, this controller sends a signal to the relay, which energizes the uh, pull. And also controls the hold. Same way with like on the M series, this is a gateway controller, sends a signal to the relay to energize the pull and it also controls the hold. So that's just a couple different mechanisms that actually control these solenoids. Now let's take a look at how that works. So I'm just gonna ground, of course, the negative wire. We just got a 12 volt power source. Now we're just gonna energize the white wire and let's see what happens. See how that pulls in? That's pretty violent. That's a lot of current, a lot of power that pulls that in. But see what happens when I take the power off? It shoots right back out. So now let's energize our red circuit. Now I can put that wire there and nothing happens, of course, because it's simply a hold circuit. So I'm gonna manually push this in and look, it locks down. So that half amp of current is all it takes to energize that coil just to hold it in that position. Now let's take power away from it and it pops out. That kind of gives you an idea of how the solenoid works. So no matter what is controlling the pull solenoid, it's only a momentary source of power. So on and off, and that's all we give it. Because if we do that quick enough, let's see if we can try to jump this. All right, so I energize the hold. And I just gave a quick burst. I just shorted it out with my pliers here to the uh, pull circuit and see now it'll hold in your engine will run or your brake will stay up in the hold position. So the brake and the fuel shutoff solenoid really work in the same, same way. The brake solenoid literally has a big piston inside there with a spring and that piston gets sucked in. That's what pulls the brake wedge up. Let's just take a little bolt and watch how that'll work. So if I just put the bolt in the end of this solenoid, watch what happens when we negative there and let's put on the pull circuit. Ooh, let me get it. Ooh, it sucks that thing in. So it really pulls it hard. And you can, I don't know if you can see there's some smoke coming off there because there is so much current going through there. But we can pull that right out unless we energize our hold circuit. So the hold circuit now holds the brake into position. See that bolt's not coming out. And it's got pretty good force on it. I can pull it off but it is, it, it's enough to hold that brake in the up position. So hopefully that makes sense on how the pull and the hold circuits are different and how they work. Let's go take a look at the machines and actually show kind of what we were talking about with the controllers, how they work. So we'll go over here and we'll take a look at our 763 first and how that engine fuel pull or fuel shutoff solenoid works. Now, remember these solenoids have been used on Bobcat's equipment since the early 90s and they're actually being used all the way up until today. Now on the fuel shutoff solenoid side on the engine, they were only used from about the early 90s up to about 2014, and then our engines became electronics so we didn't use, but pretty much every engine up to 2014 um, would have that fuel shutoff solenoid. Now the brake solenoid is actually used on our R series and we have actually got two of them. So the same style brake solenoid that we've used since the early 90s is still being used today on the R series. And like I said, there's two of them. They're gonna have two separate fuses and two different relays on those circuits. So just something to keep in mind. So let's just take a look at our fuel shutoff solenoid here and how it works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the front of the machine and I'm just gonna turn the key to the on position. And you'll see that that solenoid will actually pull as soon as I turn the key to the on position. See how that just pulls? And that works off that timer that we were looking at a minute ago. Let's turn the key off and it closes. And we can see down here our timer relay and our fuse. 
Now underneath the air box here, I know it's kind of hard to see. I should have had a light ready. But anyways, this is where our solenoids are for like the brake. This will be the brake. There's just several solenoids under here, but the brake solenoid is gonna be under here and the fuse is gonna be found in our fuse boxes over here on the side. Now what we're gonna look at is my S175. It also has a very similar fuel hold solenoid that we can see right here. So what I'm gonna do now so I'm gonna walk over to the machine and I'm gonna turn the key on. Okay, the key is in the on position, but you will notice that that fuel shutoff solenoid did not pull because now instead of a timer controlling it, our controller is controlling it. The controller won't pull it and the hold it until it sees a crank signal. So now let's turn it to the crank position and see if that'll pull in. So you saw that instantly, I mean, this engine started up really fast, but as soon as I hit the crank um, position on the key switch, it pulled in at that time. So that's something that's a little different between like this early G series and the F series machines. Now let's go look at our S160. This is a little bit later um, style G series. And we can see that it does not have that mechanical um, solenoid out here. This one's actually going into the block and that pushes the fuel rack in that position closed. So we'll pull it and that'll allow the rack and the governor to take over and that'll be the shutoff position. So that, that's something that um, we wanna take a look at over here on the table because this is it's a three wire plug, but there's only two wires going in the solenoid and the black wire actually bolts to one of the mountain bolts, mounting nuts here, I guess, and it grounds to the body. So three wires doesn't go in. So that is something to keep in mind. That is a little bit different solenoid, but uh, they have been changed. So if you were to replace it, it'll be a new style solenoid with the same style plug. So we see that style. Now let's go look at our 250. It's still a G series, but we're using you know, just like the solenoids we were looking at on the table. This one actually comes in from the top and pushes down for the fuel shutoff solenoid to work. But same style plug. It looks like somebody has run an accessory wire and put in a electric lift pump. I don't like to see that. We'll fix that at some point. It's probably something wrong with the mechanical lift pump. So somebody, instead of replacing that, wired in an electric lift pump. But anyways, that's besides the point. We're just looking at the different style solenoids on the different style engines that we have. Then here's that solenoid that I was talking about that's on the, um, the S160 over there. And you'll see this on a lot of excavators too. Uh, that style engine uses this. But see, it grounds to the body. I've just got it bolted to the body right now so that we could test it. But it uses a separate harness and there's only two wires on this side. So the body is the ground on this one as opposed to pretty much every other style where the ground wire actually goes into the case and is internally grounded. So hopefully that information, you know, kind of helps a little bit. Maybe it makes it a little more clear how these three wire solenoids work. Um, and then I guess the next video, what we're going to do is we'll look at this S250 because we actually got a brake issue with it. The computer is satisfied. It thinks the brake is working, but there's no brake inside. Like the brake wedge is gone. So either it broke off or something happened. It wasn't pulling correctly. I'm not sure. But we'll tear into that and we'll look at just doing a full troubleshooting issue on the 250. So if that helped or any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.